Hello everyone, Professor Christensen here. Today we are looking at activity-based costing. I'm going to run through an example of how to implement activity-based costing. All right, so here is our example. It's Mindy's wedding gowns and they manufacture um, two kinds of wedding gowns. Here's an analysis of the company's costs um, with their activities and activity levels. Mindy knows that the direct materials cost per unit is $200 for a standard gown and $500 for a custom gown. And the direct labor for a standard gown is $250 and $600 for a custom gown. So they make 4,000 standard gowns and 750 custom gowns each year. All right. Okay. So, um, Let's take a look at what we've done here. So I, I skipped the beginning part. The beginning part here is identify the activities. Um, and if you're a student working in a textbook, these have to be pretty much identified for you. So these are the different activities that take place. We have cutting and assembly, machine setup, product design, and plant services. And this is the total cost for each of those activities. So before this all happens, each of the activities had to be identified and then the cost assembled with those activities. The other thing that the company would have done is estimated, well, first of all, we know the cost drivers. The driver is the thing that makes the cost happen. So in other words, the more direct labor hours, um, the more your cutting and assembly cost is going to be, right? The more batches you have, the higher your machine setup cost will be, etc. Um, so they have estimated what their activity level is going to be for the year. So they're estimating 30,000 direct labor hours, 200 batches, 10 designs, and 10,000 square feet of manufacturing space, okay? All right, so that's step one and step two. They traced the costs and they made the, all of the estimate. They found the activities, traced all the costs, and they have their estimates all done. All right, so now if you studied already, which you probably did, um, allocating overhead, you know that generally we take the total estimated overhead and divide it by the total estimated activity. Okay, total estimated overhead divided by total estimated activity. So that's what we're going to do here. Now remember, with activity-based costing, you have, instead of having one, say a plant-wide rate, where you have one rate maybe based on direct labor hours or machine hours, um, you're going to have four different rates here. Okay? So we're going to have a different rate for each one, but it's no different than calculating overhead rates um, with a single one, except you have to do it four times. Okay? So, the total estimate, so this is equal to the total cost, right, divided by the total estimated activity. I'm going to type this in because we have the DLH there, okay? So it's $10 per direct labor hour, all right, per direct labor hour. This is very important here because you're going to notice that each one is per something else. It's per design, it's per batch, it's per square foot. So you have to say, what is the measure? Okay. All right. So here we have the million dollars. That's our total estimated cost. We're going to divide it by 200 batches. And that gives us $5,000 per batch. All right. Okay. Next up. I'm going to keep doing the same thing. Take the 600,000, divide it by 10. You get 60,000 per design. And then last one, 500,000 divided by 10,000 square feet gives you $50 per square foot. Okay. All right. So now we have our rates, four different rates. Okay, so we're done with step three. Next thing we're going to do now is allocate the costs to the different products. So they make standard gowns, so that's going to be a lot of the same, right? And then they make custom gowns, and those are going to be more individualized, all right? So 
here is the activity that they're using for each. Okay. Well, let me get rid of this DLH, otherwise that's going to cause me a problem. Okay. All right. So our activity rates, we know that we're just going to go over here. Okay. I'm just going to drag that down. So our activity rates are equal to the numbers we just calculated, right? 10, 5,000, 60,000, and 50. And it's the same here. Okay. The activity rate doesn't change. It's the same for both kinds of gowns. The difference is the actual activity. So remember when we apply overhead, it's the rate, the overhead rate times the actual activity. So what are we saying? We're saying, well, these standard gowns used 20,000 direct labor hours. So what is the allocated cost? Well, it's $10 per direct labor hour times $20,000. So our allocated cost is $200,000 in total for all of our standard gowns. Okay. And it's going to be the same for each of these. We're going to multiply our activity rate times the actual activity. Okay. So here we did 5,000 times 50. That gave us the 250. 60,000 times only one design for the standard gowns. So that gives us 60,000 and then 50 times 7,000 square feet. Okay, so now we have the total allocated cost for all of our standard gowns. All right. Now the thing that gets a little messy here, there's a lot of numbers. So you have to do this systematically, do it step by step because it can be a little confusing, right? So remember what we did. First we found the rate, then we multiplied the rate times the actual activity to get our allocated cost. So we know, for example, $200,000 of cost is allocated to the standard gowns. But of course, a company needs per unit information, right? They need to know how much does it cost us to make each gown. That's the kind of information they're going to be using to make decisions. All right. So how many gowns are we making? Let's come back over here. The company makes 4,000 standard gowns each year. All right. So our allocated cost is 200,000. Our cost per unit is equal to the 200,000 divided by 4,000 gowns. And we're going to divide each of these numbers by 4,000 because that's how many gowns we're making to get our cost per unit. So I'm going to make this change this reference. Oops. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Let me try that again. Change the reference. Nope. It's not going to let me change the reference. Um, oh, I don't have to change the reference. I'm sorry. I'm doing the wrong thing. Okay. So this is going to be equal to this. No, it is divided by 4,000. I want the 4,000 to be absolute, but it's not going to let me. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it alone. It's going to be equal to 200,000 divided by 4,000. Okay. Which gives us $50. All right. Let me try one more time because I'm persistent. I don't know why. It worked fine before, but it's not working now. Okay, that's fine. So each of these, we're going to take our cost, divide it by 4,000 gowns, and get our cost per unit. Okay. Okay. So that's the cost for each of these activities for each standard gown. Okay each of the standard gowns. Now we're going to do the same thing for the custom gowns. So first thing we're going to do, our rate is $10. Our actual activity here is 10,000. So it's going to be equal to the 10 times the 10,000. Okay. And notice our machine setup. We have more batches here. Okay. We have a lot more designs for our custom gowns and a little bit less than the square footage. All right. So now we have the total allocated cost for our custom gowns. And if you look up here, it tells us 750 custom gowns we make each year. So how much is this per unit? It's equal to a thousand divided by 750. I'm sorry, a hundred thousand divided by 750. This is equal to this divided by 750. OK, 
okay? All right, so now we have our cost per unit for each of these activities. All right, our final, final thing we're going to do, how much is the cost per unit for each kind of gown, right? We want to know how much does this gown cost us in total? All right, so we know our direct labor and our direct materials. So it says direct materials is 200 for the standard gown and 500 for a custom gown. So our direct materials is 200 for the standard gown, 500 for the custom gown. Okay. Our direct labor is 250 for standard, 600 for custom. So our direct labor, 250 and 600. All right. Now in here, we're going to put the costs per unit that we just calculated. So our cutting and assembly for a standard gown is $50 per unit. All right. I'm going to put each of those here. So those are all of the costs of our standard gown. We'll add them up. And the standard gown costs us in total, materials, labor, and overhead, $665. All right. Okay, so now let's put in the overhead, the allocated activity-based costs here. We have our materials and our labor. Our cutting and assembly was 133.33. Take all of our other ones, add these up, and you have $3,153.33. Okay, all right, so that is activity-based costing through all of the steps. Um, I hope you find this helpful in your studies. If you like the videos, please hit subscribe. That's helpful to me. And I wish you all the best of luck in your uh, accounting studies now and in the future.